Welcome to a rapid fire review from Of Card and Board. Today we're going to be talking about Captain Sonar, which cards on the table, you guys, is one of my very favorite games. But let's talk about why. In this aquatic game of cat and mouse, Captain Sonar pits two submarines against each other on a hunt to the death in the deep. Simple as that, folks. You win the game if you destroy the enemy submarine before it destroys you. Captain Sonar is a team versus team game, a rarity in the board gaming world and something I'd like to see more of. It draws a dividing line down the middle of your table with a large screen, obscuring your view of what your opponents are up to on their little dry erase sheets while you have yours. Everyone on your submarine crew has a unique and special job to do, like the captain, who will be writing down the direction your submarine is traveling in and shouting out directions to the rest of your team, the radio operator whose job it is to listen to the enemy captain be making notes about what directions the enemy submarine has been moving in, the first officer who every time the submarine moves gets to charge one of the submarine's many systems, from weapons to tools to identify the location of the enemy submarine to ways to travel more sneakily and throw your opponents off the scent, and then finally, the unenviable position of the engineer whose job it is to break a piece of your submarine every time you move and keep in constant communication with the captain about which directions the submarine can and can't move in, as well as what systems are and are not working. Over time, the radio operator will begin to discern, using the notes they've been taking in their clear, slidey plastic sheet, where they think the enemy submarine may be hiding. So you charge up your torpedoes, you book it over there, and then you start firing as soon as you're in range. Also along the way, the first officer will be charging systems that allow you to launch drones into the air, which essentially allow you to ask questions of the opposing team about their location. Some of the times they get to answer with truths and lies, and other times they only answer yes or no as you ask about specific portions of the map and whether or not they're there. Now what makes this blessed box of cardboard so special and a fairly unique offering in the world of board games is that it is played in real time. Now what this means is that it is not played, okay, you finish your turn, now it's our turn, okay, we finished, now it's your turn. No, this game is played in a rapid, continuous stream. It's panic, it's stress, you're scribbling on your dry erase workstation trying to accomplish everything you can as quickly as you can because every second the enemy submarine is honing in on where you could be, drawing closer, charging torpedoes, and you need to take them out before they can sink your tiny tin can in the bottom of the sea. The pacing and the energy of this game are incredibly high. There are so few other games that offer anything remotely like this. This game is for people who like to play in big groups. It is best played with six to eight players so that you can have full teams on either side of that dividing screen. The box does say that you can play with as few as two or four or anything between two and eight. Two or four players is either going to be so stressful I can't even imagine it as you're managing all those positions we talked about by yourself or with one other person, or the box does offer a turn-based, more traditional way to play. But in my opinion, that's not playing the same game that this box was meant to really showcase. The turn-based variant is there if you want it, and it is a good way to learn the game once you first crack it open. The folks who will enjoy this game the very most are those who enjoy games that have a high level of energy and interaction with people around the table, and people who enjoy a fast, paced game. And especially if you enjoy the idea of a shared stress in the name of fun, then good golly, this game is for you. Now, admittedly, if everything I just said sounds a little too high octane and high energy for your personal tastes in gaming, maybe this game isn't for you, but I will offer this. The pacing of this game really is set by everyone at the table. So if everyone's learning it, it will naturally move a little bit more slowly and create more space for you to go and play and learn the motions. The mere act of pulling this box off of my shelf fills my soul with a level of energy and anticipation that I don't think any other box in my board game collection does. I love this game dearly. It may not be for everyone, but goodness gracious, it's such a special and unique experience. I would recommend it to almost anyone just to try it once and see, because those who love this game tend to really love this game. 
I just want to rub it all over my face. Thank you so much for joining us today for this rapid fire review. I'm Steve from Of Card and Board. If you've ever had an experience playing a game where it started with a lot of stress and shouting and just devolved into laughter as whatever you were trying to accomplish came apart into chaos, leave a comment below and tell us what game you were playing. You might enjoy this one. If perhaps you're curious to learn more about other modern board games that every day more and more people are discovering are truly super awesome, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. We do new videos every Wednesday. And as we part ways in this digital wonderland, please always remember the best way to keep your submarine safe is liking this video.